Hey guys and welcome to Little Black Boat 91. We are here giving you guys again, I call it the US Task Force this week. Okay, <laughs> dealing with married at first sight. Because let me tell you something, like we're gonna need a task force to deal with some of the issues that we're facing in this week's episode. So if you guys missed the episode, there may be some spoilers involved, just to let you know. Some people will be commenting saying, you guys are spoiling it for me. Well, you better get with the show. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I am joined with some lovely, lovely guests of mine. You might have seen them last week, but I've got a special edition this week as well. She has specially flown in for me. Yes, Talisa has flown in for me, especially for... No, I'm just saying, she, she, actually, she was meant to be here last week, but uh, she, she was away. And so I had to bring her back and say, Talisa, I need you this week. And she's decided to come in for me. So I appreciate that, Talisa. Um, but yes, guys, um, as always, I want to make sure that you guys can introduce yourselves. Let the audience get to know you if they don't already know you. Um, and just let them know where you can, where they can find you and who you are. So I'll go with Jack and Glenn first um, and then introduce yourself from there. Go for it, Captain. Hey, hey I'm Glenn from the Jack and Glenn channel. Um, I'm at Jack and Glenn on youtube jack underscore glenn on instagram jack underscore glenn on twitter uh we just happen to be here once again to talk merit at first sight because this episode was a doozy and i'm ready to break it down with this great cast so hey make sure you check out jack and glenn subscribe to us at jack and glenn on youtube beautiful stuff appreciate jack and glenn if i go to august love story all right, I'm going, I guess. <laughs> Artika, this is Tommy, and we are August Love Story on everything on social media, Facebook, Instagram, all that. YouTube. Love that. Love that. <laughs> love that. And last but not least, Talisa. Yes, I love that. Go ahead and say a little song at the end of my life. <laughs> I'm going to be on Instagram, and you can find me everywhere. Twitter, not that I'm on there that often. Facebook, Instagram, uh, and I am Talisa Ray. Here on YouTube, just plain Talisa Ray. I am also a life coach, so you can, which is a spin on the life coach for women, helping women find the love that they want, starting with themselves. And that can also be found at TalisaRay.com. I'm so excited to join you guys. I'm just so dope. I was excited last week, like, oh, I missed it. <laughs> I appreciate it, Talisa, man. Thank you. Uh, so, guys, uh, you know, I want to kick it off strong, you know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm I'm debating right now if I go straight to Chris or do I go to another one. I'm scared if I go to Chris. We ain't never gonna we we we're, we're gonna go the whole hour with Chris because there's a lot to talk about. Uh, you know what I'm saying? So I might just leave him to the last bit. You know what I'm saying? Um, let me focus, I guess, so we can do the others quickly, and we'll get down to Chris because he's he, we have to talk about him. Um, but let's start off strong. Let's start with Brian Vincent. Um, I want to ask this question: Who was wrong, Brian Vincent? Who was wrong can he even say that i don't know can we even say that someone was wrong um if i go to august love story first give us your kind of sentiments you want we just had a talk about this oh okay before we started um i well we think that vincent was i guess you could say the wrong one in the equation but only because he did not voice fully what his issue was he just kind of bailed out on everything. So mm -hmm. I think that he should have taken a step back and been able to like successfully be able to say, this is exactly what bothered me. This is what I would like for you to no longer do again. Mm, yeah. Okay. I was, I was more so thinking that, uh, I don't want to say they were wrong. I don't think neither one was wrong. He was voicing an opinion about something and she was just like, what are you talking about? Mm -hmm. Um, with time, they'll be able to have a better conversation between each other about that. Um, but I think Vincent gets a he had he feels a certain way because of he didn't go to school or didn't. Mm. I think his education um, steps in like his uh, I don't, lack, of, lack of education lack steps of in because he feels a certain type of way. He feels like somebody's talking down to him and, and can't decide. Um, decide if it's just her plan or she actually throwing jabs at him. Because um, he mentioned that with his with his ex girl, and you know that kind of played a role into it. Um, I'm just like, man, you you kind of got to let that go. Like, mm. educated or not educated, you know, like if you can read, you pretty much good. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the way I look at it. But I I think that has a something to do with how he reacted to what she said so mm. 
Hey, good points, good points. I appreciate August love. I wish that. Uh, if I go Jack and Glenn. Yeah, I, I agree with Tommy a little bit. I think he got some insecurities from when he was younger. Um, so make it serious. And, and insecurities about people talking to him or talking down or, or kind of disrespecting him. And so when he got to this point now, when she says something, I think it's built up for the little things that's happening over the honeymoon. And so if you heard it in the scene when it first opened up, she's like, you know, you might want to shave or cut your hair. Like y'all, y'all, like y'all 11 days in, you telling me to shave and cut my hair. I'm not there yet. We still in Vegas. I, I, I ain't get to my barber ain't even here yet. You know what I'm saying? Well, I just got home. And I think, you know how we are sometimes. We like to go to the same barber. Or we cut, you know, he may not even had a chance to go to the barber or shave up, but she's already commenting about his shave and about, you know, shave your beard up and, and go ahead and knock your hair out. So when it got to the spilling of the wine and the comment about, oh, you being so bitty, she, in her mind, it was a joke, but he had been hurt so much that it's been piled on so much, he felt personal. Like, what do you mean it's Benny? Because again, a person who's already clumsy, knows that he's clumsy and everybody keep bringing up that he's clumsy, he's gonna feel some type of way. It's like putting a backup quarterback in, in a game. He's going in and thinking like, you know, I don't wanna mess up. I don't wanna mess up. I don't wanna mess up. And what the first thing that happened, he messes up. So he's walking on eggshells in his own house. And now for her to be like, you know, I don't feel um, she felt offended when he brought it up. But you're the same person who told him, yo, you have an issue, share with me. So he's sharing it with you and you get offended because, again, he's telling you how he feel, how he received it. You may not attended it that way, but attended it that way. But he received it in a way that it was demeaning and belittling him. So you can't knock him for feeling that way. Now let's have a conversation. My problem with Vincent is that he got up and left. That's mm. my issue. my biggest issue is that he didn't try to figure it out, solve it out. You got an extra bedroom, dog. You know, if y'all that man, you got an extra bedroom. So why get your stuff and leave and bolt out? You could have fixed that situation. He, he already had up, made up in his mind. I'm bouncing. The way they produced it, the way they showed it. Now we don't know if anything else happened, but the way he showed it was that he already had made up in his mind. I'm gonna bounce mm. instead of saying, you know what, I'm gonna stay in the other room. I'm not gonna go anywhere. Again, they're 11 days in, 12 days in. No one has set any boundaries about if I argue, what are we going to do if I argue? Are we leaving? Are we going to stay? Are we going to uh, you know, try to work it out? Are we going to talk in the morning? What are we going to do? So his mind will say, you know what? I'm bouncing. Mm. Good points. Good points, Jack and Glenn. If I get to Lisa. So Lisa, let us know your, your particular thoughts on the Brie and Vincent. Who is right and who is wrong? Or if anybody's wrong, I should say. Well, I don't know if I could, I would say, I don't know if I want to use the words wrong, but I do mm. think that they are um, both learning one another. And so they have to be a lot more patient and tolerant and a little more kind. However, um, for me, and I got kind of chewed out on my panel for this, I felt like Vincent was more in the wrong than Brianna. And here's why. The whole Vinny thing was, a joke, right? And I get that she was that she's very like sarcastic and has dry wit. Um, but just the other night, Champagne Vinny was okay. So if you are uncomfortable with me calling you Vinny now, I feel like you should have been uncomfortable with the group calling you Champagne Vinny because on that same line, that's the whole reckless and idiotic kind of reference in my point of view. And so him discussing it, yes. When she asked for um, like specifics, she, he should have provided her with more. He's going to have to learn how to not beat around the bush and just be direct and say, this is what I don't like and call her out on it when she does it. Otherwise, she's going to keep doing it and then he's going to keep running away because I, I agree with Glenn. One thing he should not have done when she said, I don't want to talk about it anymore, which was totally wrong. She should have said, let's put a thing in it. Let's come back to it. Let's revisit it. Um, but she didn't. So at that point, he should have just said, okay, we're going to take a break. It's getting a little heated. We'll talk about it later. I, I'm, I'm so with not leaving. Like what's the, what, what's that doing, but driving an additional wedge in a, in what could possibly be a great relationship. I mean, mm. also when I think about them talking about just moments before they're my person, he's my person. This is how, if you guys have different communication styles, they're not yet your person. If you're too afraid to address what the issues are, because they could be, but you have to, Talk about it, uh, you know. But I got, I got chewed out, so. I don't know. Mm, mm. Oh, does does uh, anybody agree? Anybody disagree? Uh, Jackson, then you want to go? Go for it. You can unmute yourself, by the way. You can unmute yourself if you want to. If you want to talk, let me do it for you. Yeah, go for I it. Got, so, I, yeah, I, I kind of agree with her. You know, at least with, with Talisa, you know, 
it drives a wedge, but it also brings another thing up because now Bree has in the back of her mind when trouble get rough, is he going to bounce every time we got an issue? That's true. Is he going to leave every time there's a tough situation comes up? When we have an argument, he's going to bounce. Now put down in her mind about dang, this you a man, right? You you a dude, right? So now when it gets rough, are you going to bounce every time adversity comes in our relationship? So now that doubt is there, and 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 I don't know. Some women can get over it quickly. Some can't. So we will have to wait and see. But and, and as a woman's mindset is like, dang, you, you bouncing over this? Like you, you you bouncing over this? So what happens if something serious happens? I ain't gonna see you for days. You see what I'm saying? So that's a whole different thing that's gonna play out now. Can she really trust him to be the provider to take care and do what he needs to do? If adversity happens, he leaving. Mm, mm. Does this? Does this? Um... Did do you think he left maybe because the anger situation? You know, does that play a part in maybe uh, the reason why he decided to up and leave the way? I mean, I don't agree with the fact that he left. I'm I'm only offering something. Maybe the anger did that play a part in it? August Love, if I get you guys, it, it was it. If I can leave that. So I mean, yeah. I have no clue why he left. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like for me, that's the dumbest thing to do when you're in an argument. Let's end this argument or table the situation, like you said, Salisa. Um, that's the best. Like it's, it's like they got to learn how to do conflict resolution for yeah. sure. But leaving the situation doesn't fix that. You don't learn anything because once you come back, you still have that to deal with, and now you have extra stuff because then the question of where you been, you know, mm. on top of what we were just talking about, you know. So it, it's it's you know, it's okay to table things. Like, hey, we're just going to come back to it. You know, it's okay. But Basically saying, I don't want to talk about it right now while the emotions are fresh. Right. Like, mm. give me a minute, let me calm down, and then we can have a rational conversation about it. Mm. But he stormed out like a little kid, though. <laughs> mm. I'm, I'm, I'm leaving. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I agree that too, and I agree that. Um, uh, do you okay? So I, I know obviously we kind of mentioned a little bit. So in terms of her mentioning maybe the Vinny situation, do you think it was more of a build up of consistent kind of little kind of like you know like obviously like I saw someone put in there like is it more to do with that attitude that obviously she has potentially towards him rather than actually just a solo comment on its own so like the Vinny comment it was like it's a Vinny thing to do what does that even mean because champagne Vinny is different to it's a Vinny thing to do champagne Vinny is positive bruv champagne Vinny is the guy that's the life of the party okay but it's a Vinny thing to do does that make it a little bit more uh, have a more negative connotation and maybe that's why he flipped I'm just offering something else again to discuss um if there's no anyone wants anybody wants to talk about that can I no, go oh, ahead? Go on, you can go August. You can go August and then, then Talisa will go. Yeah. August will go. August left her. You go, then I'll go. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, I think I think the it's a Vinny thing to do. It was it was honestly I feel like it was honestly just a a response. You know, it wasn't nothing behind him, nothing malicious behind it or anything like that. She was like, Oh, that's just a Vinny thing to do. You know, kind of like trying to have jokes, you know what I'm saying? Like, for instance, and this is like a lot of people get mad about this because somebody have heard me and my wife say this, but we'll talk about each other and then we'll say your mama. <laughs> <laughs> it's a thing that we do. We know it's one of the most disrespectful things to say. And he'll say it in front of my mother. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but. It's it's just a thing that we do, and I think that's that's how I looked at it as oh that's just a Vinny thing to do. The funny part would have been if she would have done something. Oh, that's just a Brianna thing to do. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of start to make that type of connection with him. And that's how I looked at it. Mm. So he um, just wasn't in a mood to be played with. Man, the mood day. changed. <laughs> the music changed. The mood changed. Everything. <laughs> music cut. Shoo. <laughs> Party done off. <laughs> Teresa? <laughs> you can totally see. I agree. I'm gonna piggyback off of what you said. You could totally see that the mood changed in the in the room instantly. I thought, oh wow. But um again, I feel like it was just she was just 
feeling dead space. You know, sometimes you just fill the air with whatever because you don't want it to be awkward or silent or, you know, or whatever. But I also think that he is a bit of a hothead. I do think that um, all these little things that he feels are um, demeaning or belittling to him are just adding up. And so him not vocalizing it, he, he is a ticking time bomb. When they talked about, I don't want to, I don't want to snap back. I thought, Ooh, well, what is, what does that mean? And what does that look like? Snap back? Are you violent? Like what, what are we talking about here when we say snap back? So I think that he um, definitely has to open up his mouth and start saying, I didn't like when you did that. You know, I don't like it. I'm embarrassed, you know, and then be on her end. She needs to be receptive of what he's saying. Right. Needs to acknowledge him so that he feels heard and seen and say, you know, I'll work on it. I didn't mean it that way. I'll work on it. Let me, let me ask Jack, Jack and Glenn before you go then let me ask you the question did Bree acknowledge what he said because I think that's also I'm not again him leaving is, is just madness that's, that doesn't make sense to me but did Bree acknowledge his point like you really? said earlier on impact versus impact versus intent so I'm asking yeah. yeah I don't think she I don't think she acknowledged his intent because that's what he's looking for in her mind she didn't mean anything by it so she was like you know I don't see why you're mad but then she forgot. We go back to a couple of his episodes. Remember we was in the bathroom together? He dropped the soap. He dropped something else. And he, so that clumsiness. So unless I'm just using the bathroom thing. Like okay. He might drop something else while it was there. So when she said it was a funny thing to do, means like, man, you're clumsy. You know? Ooh. And so in his mind, like, dang, you been literally because you think I'm clumsy because I did this before. So she's reverting back to all the things that happened before. He might have spilled something on his clothes when he was eating dinner, spilled a drink while he was in Vegas. And so now when she says the Vinny thing to do, it's like, oh, you do this all the time. So I just, I'm gonna just call it the Vinny thing to do. So now he's feeling some type of way because he's like, yo, my manhood is threatened. Mm. And again, you on TV and, and, and his mind is like, you belittling me in front of America. And so I'm, I'm upset, I'm mad now, so he's feeling. Now, did she acknowledge it? No, she didn't acknowledge it because, again, she's not going to acknowledge it because she didn't see anything wrong with it. She thought That's it was true. a joke. Okay. So if it, now, but he didn't give her an opportunity. And again, he didn't really fully explain himself yeah, to her true. to make her know, you know what, this really hurt me. If he had fully explained himself, you know what, I don't like when you say this, that, and other because this has happened to me in the past. I have this situation going on. I had people in my life told me that I would never mount enough, nothing. I told people in my life told me I'd never make it. People in my life they told me because I don't have the education, I wouldn't be successful. I had to work hard for it, and now I feel some type of way with my wife. Again, back to the same, he feels that his wife is not supporting him, even with the little jokes. Mm-hmm. My, oh, my. Mm. Mm. Can I ask yes, go for it. Go for it. Mm -hmm. Um, I, when you were talking, I thought to myself, part of it is that he's not used to a woman of her stature, a woman mm. that is very, you know, she's beautiful, she's got a great job, um, and she speaks with a certain type of authority. We're gonna call her bossy, whatever, but <laughs> she, speaks in a way, she speaks in a way. Um, that I don't think means to be belittle him, but I think that because she she has such a strong voice as a woman, period, he's he may not be used to women um, talking to him in that mm. manner, and it may be triggering to him as well. Like, um, you know, like you said, there's you know um, people don't didn't think that he would amount to anything, and so now he's looking at his wife like she's got all these accomplishments. My last girlfriend didn't want to stick by me. Is this going to be kind of a, the same? Uh, M.O. I don't know. Maybe. And also, I think we got to add too his Hispanic culture that's in the yes. mix. Yes. They are very prideful people. You very know what I'm saying? He's Dominican, Dominican, very prideful people. So now he's like, he throw that in the mix. And as you mentioned, he didn't grow up with a father. So that's another aspect of it too, dealing with maybe his mom wasn't that strong at all. Mm -hmm. Whatever. So uh, your point you just made, when you have a strong woman who's used to being organized, She's an engineer, for God's sake, so her things has to be on point. She really doesn't have any room for error in her job for what she does. So everything has to be on point precise. He just can't He can't take that. Now she has to learn, again, how to communicate to him, kind of to build him up and to make him, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, uh, feel confident about himself on a, on a regular basis. So she's going to have to be able to do both, uh, be a supportive wife, listen, understand what he's saying, to build him up and to keep things flowing uh, in an appropriate manner in way. So uh, he can feel confident and kind of massage him a little bit. Absolutely. Apologies about that, guys. I had an internet connection go down. 
<laughs> I'm glad you continue to show it. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah. So I don't know what actually was said. So, uh, but uh, yeah. Um, I mean, if I can add um, to 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 it, maybe we can even discuss a little bit. Um, I think obviously in regards to to Brian Vincent, I, I, again, I want to say it for the third time. I, I still don't understand why he left, <laughs> um, but I, I think um, I, I do think it's quite interesting watching Bree and Vincent because obviously, yes, he's very. I don't want to say I don't say like very sensitive, but he is sensitive in an area, and I think that area where he's not very confident in. Mm-hmm. And let me ask the men because I've got men on the chat today. Get me. Um, I I thought one of his un, maybe his insecurity too is the fact that his money's not up. I don't know if his money's up, up. I know he's got a business, but I think his money's not up, up. And I'm going to be honest with you, because I think when your money's up, up, you think differently as a man and you feel different as a man. Do you know what I'm saying? And it, and when you're in a situation where financially you're not as stable as you need to be, um, I believe that can affect where you're at as well. But let me ask the men in, in the sense of, um, does that, f- f- for us as men, like when we're not established financially, does that affect does that make you more sensitive? That can that make you a bit more sensitive to, I guess, maybe the way that Bree's even talking and taking it in the wrong fashion and wrong way, maybe perhaps. <laughs> oh, because I'll let you go first, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh I don't I don't think it, it should like have anything to do with it. Um mm. it's been plenty of times where like um one one point in time I was fired from a job. And Artiga had to like take care of the bills. Mm. You know, it wasn't a humbling thing. The, the roles of our relationship didn't change or anything like that. We continued on as business. We just had to make sure a roof was over our head. We had food, lights, water, and uh, internet. You know, and so we had to had to make sure those things came about. Um, but I mean, I don't feel like that should have anything to do with like. For me, it's not an ego thing. You know, if I make more or she make more, at the end of the day, we got to pay bills. We live together. We got to make sure that we're keeping forward with what's mm-hmm. going on. So, okay. yeah. I mean, it's the same thing with me. It's not, it's not an ego thing. Um, you know, Jim Jack will hear she tell you in our whole marriage, she's made more than me. Um, not, you know, whether it's by a little bit or a lot. Um, you know, she's made more than me because of her education and what she does. Um, so it wasn't an ego thing. I still provide. We still take care. Well, again, it comes in the same. I mentioned last week, it comes in the same corporation. It's in the same house. It's in the same company. It's in the same building. doesn't make me feel any less than a man because I still grind. I still I still work. I'm still educated. I still have the degrees. It's just the field that I'm in. She makes more. So now what happened is we are both power couples together. So we realize and recognize it doesn't affect me as um, a manhood thing. I just keep saying to keep grinding and get where we at because we understand the, uh, the end goal. It is us together. It's not individually her, not individually me, but it's us together. So when we hold each other down, again, if I lose a job or she loses a job, we're still going to hold each other down and maintain that. So it, it makes you grind even more to come up to that level. It, makes you, it doesn't make you feel insecure because you know you can take care of what you need to take care of. Again, mm-hmm. the four walls. So if you know who you are in yourself and you're doing the best you can, it shouldn't make you feel insecure because that's that's your grind. And that's mm-hmm. your hustle now. If you're sitting there playing video games all day and you ain't doing anything, right? Then, then, then there should be an issue, right? There should be a con because you out there, you ain't out there grinding, you ain't out there working. So now there should be an issue, and you're like, man, man up or do what you need to do. But if you out there and your best is what you're at, you're fine. And I think yeah. you, know, you know you got to realize that. Look, let's stop looking at it individual. And I know it's short mm-hmm. time, but when we put this thing together, whether you make eighty thousand, I make fifty. That's one hundred thirty coming into the home. Y'all should be able to, I don't know your lifestyle, but you should be good. Mm. Okay, yeah. so let me ask let me ask second question to the guys. I know this I want to hammer it a little bit. So Brie actually said from early on, she wants a man that makes more than her. That she may not have told him, but does that energy carry over into a relationship and how you handle yourself? when you actually have that discussion about who's making what. So, because you guys have spoken about a very good scenario where it's healthy, where you guys have established a good foundation of working together, right? Mm-hmm. But we're talking about five days in, and then you and you find out someone's energy is, I want a man that makes more than me, and if he doesn't make more than her, does that create a certain pressure for us men now looking at the situation? And does that provide some level of insecurity on our part because you're talking about a very good healthy situation where your, your partners are cool you know what i'm saying your partners are cool blood 
Yeah, but I, I, I don't know. I, I, maybe I, I well, yeah, Jack's it, not, Jack's not mean, here, but <laughs> yeah, it, 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 does, it does though. If you've got a guy who's already insecure about himself and that comes up and he feel like he can't provide for you again, we didn't say what he was making, but his lifestyle based on what we see looked like Vinny was doing pretty okay, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. for, and he was doing it like he was doing okay for him. Now, we don't know what she's making as an engineer, we can imagine she's making you know close to six figures, if not, and you know what she does. So, if he's not up to the six figure realm now. What she has to ask Vinny is, and he has to sit down and have a plan and a goal. Hey, what is your ambition? How? What is your mm. earning potential? And what? What is your earning potential in what you do? And can how can we help you, or how can I help you achieve that earning potential? It's a way to do it without making him feel insecure, mm. or, or less than a man. And I guess she has to learn if, if that's what the conversation she's having. She has to learn how to do that because you still want him to keep his manhood and security about himself. Because you don't want him to feel get down or bounce like he did, you have to talk him up to keep him motivated to to get that earning potential up. And yeah. knowing the profession he's in, I think he's a car broker. It yeah. might be some good days, it might be some good times, and it may be some lean times. That's a sales industry. There's mm. some time where you there's some time where you rolling good for six or seven months, and there's some time where in the sales industry you're down. But those six or seven months he's rolling, can we balance it out and be able to budget so? We, 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 I can cover the act back then, back in them. Mm. What are you saying, August? Um, I, I I agree. Like it's it's it puts him in a tough mindset wise. It puts him in a tough uh, position. But the thing the thing is, you have to learn how to how to communicate these things. That's the biggest thing. You mm -hmm. have to learn how to put your pride aside because like like it's not always gonna be good in that sales. Uh, Career, Arena, yeah. you know, what I'm saying? it's not always gonna be good, but it's 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 gonna be good sometimes, you know. So mm -hmm. you have to be able to say, okay, well, she may make more now, or this is what I'm working towards. So she she's the bread rent winner for our relationship, but this is where I, I can see myself in in six months or seven months, eight months, a year, two years, or whatnot. So you just gotta keep moving forward with whatever's going on and. We also have to remember they're five, six, seven days in. They're a weekend to being married and they already have, you know, already things were already set up. So mm -hmm. it's you have to learn to pivot real fast in a, in a short period of time. So, I mean, yeah, it's it's tough, but it's something he's going to have to learn to do. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. I yeah, appreciate it. Good stuff, guys. Good stuff. I think also as well, I think what's interesting is that for me, I'm looking at Vinny and I look at his behavior and I look at the way that he talks about Brie. He is always trying to cover Brie. And I think the issue that he's going to face is that if he feels that she's not covering him, he's going to get really pissed, really pissed. People who people who cover your every whim and every mistake expect the same thing back. And when they don't get it back, they're either hurt or pissed, whichever one comes first. <laughs> and it looks like he always goes to the angry part. So um, if he feels like Bree's not covering him the way that he would cover her, he the anger's going to come out and it's going to go to the most, potentially, as we just saw him go outside the house. And I think that's an issue that they're going to have to work and talk about, you know what I'm saying? So hopefully we'll, we'll have a conversation about that. Um, let's talk about, obviously, uh, Eric and Virginia. Um, I want to ask about a question to people. I mean, uh, if you're in a relationship, should you be passing out on <laughs> other people's couches? I'm just, I just want to, I, just, I don't know if that's, is that just me? Is that a bit mad? Um, so let me go to Lisa. Lisa, should you be passing out on um, the couch <laughs> if you're in a relationship? I mean, should you be doing those kind of things? Or am Absolutely I just being not. Extra? Absolutely oh. not. There is no reason that you should pass out on some girlfriend, your mom. Any, it doesn't matter who it is, <laughs> but especially a guy. You should not be passing out on somebody's couch when you're in a committed relationship mm. uh, and you're married. Like, first off, let's get your drinking under order. And then you wouldn't have to pass out. You understand what I mean? You should mm. be able to just be like, uh, I'm going to call an Uber. Babe, come and get me. No, all of that is I'm um, just it's a flat, flat, big bowl, neon letters flashing. No, eighties. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate that, Teresa. <laughs> Jack and Glenn. <laughs> oh, no, that's, just, that's a big no no, man, because uh, anything can go wrong. I know you got your boys and friends, but all y'all drunk and you laying on his couch or lay couch, anything can happen. He can rub up on you, fill up on you, touch up on you. And you have no one there to protect you because you sloppy drunk. 
You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's so many red flags with that. Uh, but she don't understand that she's still living in that sorority girl life style. She still, still thinks she's in college. Because when, when they went to her house, she saw all her sorority friends and, and those are the type of people she still hang out with. And she got to realize she's married. It's not as never a good idea to lay out on somebody's couch. Um, definitely when you're drunk, you know, you're intoxicated. And then it's the opposite sex because anything can happen. Mm-hmm. August Love, what y'all saying? Capital no. <laughs> yeah, that's a no go, man. I mean, I wasn't even I wouldn't recommend that doing that doing that as a single person, let mm. alone as a married person. Like at some point you just need to be able to control yourself. Like I had one rule in college and that was always at home. One rule. <laughs> Like, I don't care what all you do, we need to make it home. And that was a rule that we had as friends. Now, it might be from time to time where we decide before we went out that we would all be staying at one person's house that night. But that was the home for that night that we had to make it to. But we weren't in the, oh, you can make it over here. You can go over there. You can stay with this guy. No, you have to make it home. Mm. What, what, what what would be the, the the issue i mean how would you guys handle it then if your partner you know has passed that you know on someone else's couch you know they've they've they have, they're their opposite sex friends and they've passed out on their, their couch i mean how would you guys handle a situation like that i'm on my way <laughs> 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 you might your she didn't call you because she's passed out on the couch. That's now you have to just clean up the next day. What you gonna do? with TJ? like, what well, you can't? I don't know. I just, just, it's just a no. It's a, I, it's just a no. <laughs> like it's just, I, mm-mm. You. <laughs> it's just a no. Like I, I think it comes with a level of maturity. You know, you mentioned how she's part of a sorority. I mean, she was part of sorority and all that stuff. She still has that mindset. You know, she hasn't been in a relationship in forever. And even in the relationship that she was, which was, you know, probably in high school, did not have this type of um, structure or require you to be emotionally mature. Like she's not, she's not there. There's no reason that you should be staying out, passed out on some guy's couch at all. Like, mm. like, like you said, either single or married. Like I'm not gonna pass out. And just from my own experience, my late husband, um, I guess he called himself being upset with me, tells me he passed out on his friend's couch. You know, he didn't come home and he didn't he passed out on his friend's couch. How would I handle it? Uh, the best way that I could with love and kindness without being so upset and want to go like, you know, upside his head or something. Mm-hmm. Because I don't understand why your friend didn't call your wife to tell your wife that you were on her ca- on the couch and to come and get me. So for me, there's something that wasn't there. It, something wasn't missing. There, there was something missing. It wasn't full. Um, ex, uh, the full truth wasn't wasn't shared. And so, of course, you have now another issue that you are dealing with lying or infidelity. So now you have something else that you have to consider um, when you, you know, as cleanup. Mm. Like 10, 12 years ago, I remember my cousin was the only one of our friendship circle, like family circle that was married because she got married very young. She got married at 18. I remember her getting really drunk out with us one night because she didn't drink like that and she tried to drink with us. But one of the first things that we did was we called her husband. Mm. We told her husband where she he knew that she was with us and we're family like I'm literally her blood cousin. But I call him and say, hey, she's with me. This is what we're doing, and I'm gonna make sure she makes it home. She mm-hmm. makes it home. Mm-hmm. Sorry, the kid is in the background. <laughs> That's right. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. We hear you. Mm. Okay. But yeah, it was just a a definite. Let's make sure she makes it home because one of us made sure to be sober enough to take yeah. care of the group. So mm-hmm. yeah, taking care of the group, it was we're going to make sure that you make it home to your husband because your husband's not going to say. You can't hang out with me again mm. because you didn't come home one night. So right. I'm going to make sure that you make it home. And mm. I think that's the key. It's got to be a phone call, mate. Somebody got to send a text mm-hmm. message. Somebody got to make a phone call. Somebody got to make some communication. Okay. In this day and age, there's no reason for you not to be able to get home. You got Uber. You got Lyft. You got all kind of things. You got taxi cabs. You got even if you're, you're both of y'all been drinking, your husband can come and get you. Anybody, your mama, get me home. Because, again, you ne- especially as a female, you don't want to put yourself in that situation with 
a guy. I don't care how mm. good their friends are. Y'all could be drinking. We just saw in this episode on Married First Sight. Um, it was uh, Haley said she had drunk sex with Jake, and that's her husband. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> let's, be, let's be honest. She just had drunk sex yeah. with her husband. And, and, she's, and we see how that relationship began. She feels some type of way now. Mm. So yeah. you never know what will happen in, in the morning with people. You never know how what people's motives and intentions are, regardless of how long you've been friends. So never put yourself in that situation, male or female. Come on and but preach. In, yeah, my house, in my house, I'm coming home. Mm. <laughs> I'm coming home, dog. Just because mm. I don't want to deal with the ramifications of not coming home. Mm. Mm. Wow. wow. You know, wow. The, home got to be people. Boss. Bars. Okay, yeah. Um, any other sentiments and feelings towards Virginia and Eric at this moment? Was there anything else that stuck out to you in terms of their relationship? So, it, yeah. that whole, like, um, it's almost like a father-daughter relationship, especially mm. in her eyes, because she seems to think that checking in is an issue, that that's something that you do only for your parents. But no, you do it for, to people who care for you. I want to make sure you're safe. I want to make sure... And again, you drink so much that I definitely need to know when you're leaving, because you might get a DUI, you might get into an accident, somebody might snatch you up. There are so many things. Um, and I just think that she's just not ready. And then, now I don't know, maybe I misunderstood it because she said, she said that he asked, that he said that she needed to ask for permission mm. to go out. Now, people were telling me on my channel again, Unpopular opinion. It's, good, it's a good question. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they said that that's not what he said, what she said or what he meant. Well, he didn't defend himself and say that that wasn't what he meant. Now, I don't agree that you have to ask for permission, but I do agree that you need to say where you're going. I need to let you know that this is what I, I want to go to dinner with my girl. I'm going to dinner with my girlfriends tomorrow. Do we have anything planned? Or I'm going next week. It is about notifying. It's about being respectful of your relationship. He's not... At, if he's asking for permission, then that's a no. But if he's just mm. asking so he knows where you are or what your plans are so that you guys can communicate, that's a whole different whole different ball game. But for me, asking permission is different than uh, notifying, right? Mm. Uh, advising. But here I am, a widow. I've been out of the game for a little bit. So maybe, you know, the married couples know something <laughs> that I don't know. <laughs> let me ask the married couples should you be asking should you be asking for i mean i mean do you ask for permission before let's say maybe going out it's maybe is asking permission the right word maybe is it is it a is it a, a courtesy to almost ask but not necessarily you're looking for permission you know what i mean like when you ask someone like oh um can i go out i'm gonna i'm gonna go out can i go out or whatever not like can i go out but like i'm gonna go out with a girl is that is that all right right it's a question but necessarily it's not really a question <laughs> it's rhetorical like i'm going but um can i go out it's almost like to kind of put it out there i don't know is that is that still a problem though that in, in relation is that how it goes down the marriage i don't know i'm not married i'm single so someone talk to me <laughs> oh if i go august first and i'll go to jack again sorry sorry oh. Well, for us, before having kids, it was just a, I'm going out. Do we have anything planned? Or what are you doing this weekend? I think okay. I'm going to go and do X, Y, Z. Now that we have a child, it's more so, hey, what are you doing Friday? Because I need you to watch Lily so that I can go do this. It's okay. not necessarily an asking of permission. It is a making sure that everything in your house is in order. Cool. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. So I, I wouldn't say we ask for permission. Like he will notify me that he's going to do something, but it's not the day of. Mm. It's always a few days in advance. And it's always letting me know what he's doing, where he's going, and giving an approximate time frame for when he'll be back. Now, mm. there are times like he goes over to his friend's house, they hang out, they start watching a fight or whatever it is that they're doing. That may run longer, but it's always a text message conversation in that, too, that says, hey, I'm out. You know, we're doing this, this, this. I'll be back. And as long as you're checking in, OK, but I am quick to say, have you lost your mind? And that's <laughs> a 30 minute time frame. Of, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> like, I will text him and say, uh, are you dead? And he'd be like, no, what are you talking about? I just haven't heard from you. Like, if he leaves work and goes directly there, are you dead? You didn't tell me you made it. That's mm. it. That's all I need. Yeah. That's it. Okay. I respect that. Respect that. 
<laughs> check, 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 check. The same thing I'm about to say, you know, check, check in and ask for permission, by the way, we got to check our schedule. You know, we mm-hmm. have kids. So it's like, okay, who's watching this one? Who's watching this one? Okay, and we both can't do it. We got teenagers. We may need to, somebody may need to go pick this person up right here because they got practice or something like that. So it's not necessarily actually permission. I check in throughout the day because I'm driving throughout the day. I'm driving a lot of because of what I do. I'm different places. You know, by the way, I'm going here. By the way, I'm going there. Just in case, one, just in case you need something, you know where I'm at and how close I am. Just in case something happens, or if you need me, you know where I'm at. You know what I'm saying? So you never know what would what, what transpire. And most of my schedule is the same every day. So it's not necessarily permission. I mean, if I fly across the country because of work or just hang out, yeah, you know, by the way, um, I'm, is it okay if I be gone next week? You know what I'm saying? For the whole week. To me, it doesn't mess with my manhood to ask because I know we have a lot going on. And mm-hmm. I think it becomes a manhood situation. By the way, I could be submissive because, well, again, submitting one to another. By the way, is it, do you mind if I go out tonight? Or do you mind if I go watch the fight? Do you mind if I go this, that, and other? It's just a common courtesy with your partner. Do you mind if I go hang out with a girl? Like, she's not she's not here now because she had to sing. She said, by the way, so-and-so want me to go sing with him. Do you mind? What else we got, we got going on? So well, we got this going on. Yo, if you can pop in, pop in. So we can cover each other that way. That's how you cover each other and communicate. I think when you see these power struggles, somebody has some insecurity in the relationship because if you look at Virginia, oh, I got to ask permission. I didn't ask for permission. At the same time, I know your behavior and I want to know where you're at. You're my wife. Mm-hmm. So I want to make sure my job is to protect you and I don't want you to put yourself in a dangerous situation. And she can't see that, one, because of her age, and two, she never. I don't think she ever had anybody around her she never seen a, she's never seen a successful marriage. We gotta look at that too. Mm. Everybody in her family has been divorced. She has never seen what a successful marriage or a good marriage looks like. So she's basing it off her reference. And her reference points are not very good right now. <laughs> oh I like that. Bombshells. I like it. I like it. Uh let's talk about obviously Clara and Ryan. Um the cupboard situation. Mm, 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 mm. What do we think about Clara and Ryan? I don't even have a specific question. I just know the cover situation is a bit peak. What do we think about Clara and Ryan? If I go to Talisa, you know, Clara and Ryan, what, what, what are we saying about them? What, what, what was your sentiments? What was your thoughts? What do you think about them? I don't know. I'm, I'm a little on the fence with Clara and Ryan. Just, mm. just a tad. Um, number one, I think that Ryan is not being like his whole self, right? He's mm. not showing up as his as his whole self like he is partly afraid of what you might see when you see me as i am sort of like the cupboard uh you keep the cover cupboards closed and you don't see anything it looks nice and pristine you open up the cupboards i show you who i am you're not gonna like what you see you're not gonna like this uh, person that i'm hiding under structure that's just my thought but then you have clara who is also not being her full self because of what she thinks that Ryan is going to think, you know, she already thinks that he con- wants to control her, but I don't think that he does, but she is kind of like, um, she's a lot, right. Mm. To me, she's like a lot, like it's a, a, a lot. She talks too much. It's a lot. But, um, <laughs> if she, she, and she tones that down for him, you know, and I feel like mm. when you're married, you know, you're going to take all of me, the good parts, the indifferent parts and not the, the, the not so great part that you aren't, you know, I might not like it, but I, mm-hmm. I love you. So I'm a, I can deal with you talking a little bit too much or a uh, sharing. Cause that's really what it is. Just kind of like overshares a little bit, but uh, mm. I'm not, I don't really know how I feel about them. I don't know. I think religion's going to, cause I missed y'all last week. So mm. I'm going to say, I think religion's going to be a big issue. Yeah. I think that kids are going to be a big issue for the two of them. Um, and I, I'm hoping that it plays out in front of us, right? Mm. <laughs> That's a little messy, but I'm really hoping that we get to see that so that we can talk about it and really dig into what we see, you know, what they're hiding. They're both hiding. They're not They're not their full selves. You got to show up. I, I need to be me in order for you to accept me and love me and this marriage to work. And if there's something that you don't like so that we can start talking about it and moving it through. Okay, mm. I'm going to just say one more thing and I'm done. Um <laughs> <laughs> I also think that she's ready. You know, like the whole thing we've had physical there we've had some physical intimacy and and then she turns around and says he never took it I've never seen him without his shirt. And I'm thinking to myself, oh, "Okay, they are you cuddling because I don't know what else you're doing if he has his shirt on. Like you're cuddling, you're hugging, you're kissing and she's frustrated already mm-hmm. and it's only the same day. How you going to be frustrated 
seven days. Seven days. <laughs> it's only been seven days. You should be able to hold yourself together for seven days. He might make her wait, wait like four weeks, but nevertheless, he, you should be able to hold it together. Keep it mm. together, Claire. Keep your legs closed. It's fine. Don't worry about it. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm done. My rant is over. Yeah, I, know, I love it man I love it uh, Jack and Glenn if I come to you then and then go to August um, yeah, yeah, what were you thinking like, Clara and Ryan I want to ask a specific question they okay. haven't consummated the marriage as we think but as we think right they've, they've done something because they said they've done something right, right. when you go back to the previous episode she said he doesn't want us to talk about our sex life yes and so if you don't want us to talk about our sex life if you just intimate or y'all just hugging and cuddling why can't you say that unless you did something, she was lying in some way. Either she was lying to the girls or she was lying to pass the cap. Mm. See, somewhere, there's, somewhere there's, a, there's, a, there's a lie somewhere because when you was off to like, he doesn't want us to talk about our sex life, but when you talk to Pastor Cal and, oh, well, we haven't consummated yet, well, that's not what you told the girl. So there, again, it just like the covers. It looks one way on the outside, but when you really open it up, it's kind of messy on the inside. He's a private person, so he doesn't want anybody to know what's actually going on in his relationship. Again, hence the message or what he was she was saying. He, you got you got loose lips. I need you to keep that. Bad. I need you to keep that tight. I need mm. you to keep our relationship together. We thought he was just talking about you know the Chris situation, but I think he was talking about their whole relationship. Mm. People only what we want to give them, and I don't want everybody into my business. And so let's keep it keep it as private as we can. Cause we're on this show and I need you to work with me here. We can do whatever, but just work with me here. And, and again, it looks good on the outside, but on the end, when you really open the cabinets, open the door, there's some things broken and sloping and no matching glasses, cereal boxes getting ready to fall out. He got some stuff messed up. So their relationship is like that as well. She wants to really be involved. He is involved with her, but he wants to keep it everything on the hush. It's kind of remind me of remember Luke back in yep. a, a couple, yep. couple episodes mm -hmm. when Luke was like, um, you know, they had a code word for intimacy was kissing. Mm. He didn't want nobody to know they really had sex. So I think that's where Ryan, in my opinion, I think that's where Ryan is at, that he wants everything on the hush. Mm. Mm. August Love. I agree um, with both of you guys. Definitely Ryan is not being himself. And mm -hmm. the entire exchange of we don't want to talk about sex. Well, you don't have to talk about sex. Like, it's an easy conversation to yep. avoid just by saying yes or no. Mm -hmm. Because if you say no, yeah, it might give you another question, but you just say we're not ready yet, conversation's ended. If you say yes, are you using protection? Conversation's ended. So I think that if whatever it is that's going on behind closed doors, you're making people talk about it more mm -hmm. by not saying yes or no. Cause it could just end at that. Like after, I think with the exception of, and we haven't gotten to them yet with the exception of Chris and Paige, when everybody else has said that they're having sex, we're just like, Oh, okay. And we move on. Like mm -hmm. it's been just a, oh, okay, whatever we moved on. So I wish that they could both show up as who they actually are in front of the camera. And I know having a camera crew follow you has to be very weird. It has to be abrasive at times. Mm. But you don't have to put on a front because of the cameras. Like at some point, the cameras will leave, and you still have to be with this person mm -hmm. in some capacity. Mm -hmm. yeah. No. Oh, okay. I, 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 I was, I was, I was thinking it was a bit, it was a bit like I know people are secretive, and I know people can be like they don't want to talk about certain things, right? Um, but it, I thought I thought it was a bit weird that obviously they said that to Pastor Cal though. Like, like they haven't they've done other stuff. They haven't consummated. And for me, I don't know. I'm getting. I'm, I'm not gonna lie to you. I'm getting virgin virgin vibes from uh, from um, from Ryan. Gotta be honest with you. I'm getting he's a virgin and he's not telling us either that or I mean, maybe he's scared of his parents and the parents are pastors and maybe that's why he's trying to keep it ahead for that. Maybe that's another thing. But you're married, so. But again, this is not, this is this is all part of that whole thing with Ryan. I didn't know he was. I didn't know he his parents were pastors. I didn't know he grew up in a church. I didn't know you wanted someone who was a Christian. I didn't know you. You know what I'm saying? Like we we keep finding out things about Ryan that like we we didn't know that he was on about. Like do you know what I mean? It's always seen. It's it's like the cupboard situation. What happened to 
actually open doors every single time for Ryan. There's another layer to him. You know what okay. I mean? Um, if there's a, there's a little um, feeling of um, being unauthentic in some sense, I feel like in some parts with him, like he's like you said, he's not being. I'm not getting the full sense of who you really, really are. Um, and I'm I'm wondering now if that whole like I don't want to talk about my relationship and kind of be private is more controlling rather than him being personally more private. Do you know what I mean? I don't know if anyone wants to kind of um, add to that if they feel differently. Or it, quite it might similar. be a little bit controlling in the relationship that he, he likes to keep things. Remember, he's concise and he, everything. He, he's concise and calculated. So everything mm -hmm. he does, he thinks. I think he thinks it out. Okay, if I can do this, let's keep it together. Again, it may. We may look at it this way. Something I just thought about. It might be. He might know his performance ain't good. Or he might be not confident in what he has downstairs. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If he doesn't want to be able to show that or be intimate with her yet, again, it goes back. Maybe it goes back to his upbringing, as you mentioned, his parents being pastors uh, and him not saying love that he really want to make sure it's the right thing in order before him and her sleep together to make mm -hmm. sure that it's going to work out. Make sure that it's gonna stay. Uh, they're gonna stay together. So it's a lot of, like you said, it's a lot of layers with him, and he's kind of keep. He's kind of low key. Uh, mm -hmm. He doesn't say much. Um, even with the situation with Chris, he doesn't say much. Um, he he just wants again, private person, and he wants to keep things to himself. And I think he is a tad bit controlling because he likes things certain way. Mm -hmm. But he's passive well, aggressive with his controlling behavior. Mm -hmm. Oh, passive aggressive, yes. Yeah. Mm, okay. August, what's your what's your thoughts? Controlling or just private? Talking about Ryan. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't think it's a controlling thing. I think it's a a thing, a sense of I have to keep a certain appearance, mm -hmm. and that's that's all it is. I have to keep a certain like people have to look at me in a certain light, and and you're not gonna change that as my and, wife, right? As my wife, you you're not gonna change that, and um. I mean, it's going gonna, it's gonna to come to a head, man, because there's, they're so different as two people, you know, um, trying to trying to come together. Like, they'll figure it out, but I don't think he's controlling, but mm -hmm. I can see where, you know, it looks like he's, he's trying to control his narrative, yeah. mm -hmm. not necessarily her. Mm -hmm. uh, so he is point. part of the narrative. Yeah, that's a good point. Which I don't understand. Like most of the time, like you come on, you come on, you've seen this show. Yeah. <laughs> like that's my thing. When you sign up for this show. Why is it that you're trying to hide things? Right. Like you sign up for it. Like you're asking for it. You're asking for cameras to follow you for eight weeks of your life and follow everything of your life. Right. From you taking a shower to having sex with your spouse, like everything of your life is like out there. Mm. So I don't know. It's yeah, I don't know. It's weird to me. So, <laughs> Talisa, controlling. I actually, like what August Love family said about um, he's not controlling, but trying to control the narrative. And with that, I'm going to wholeheartedly agree. Absolutely, he wants to control the way he is perceived, he is viewed, especially with his family, uh, his parents being pastors, especially with him not necessarily. Um, owning his blackness, like all of those things are things that um, contribute to wanting to control like the narrative, how people see me, how I'm well put together and packaged nicely. Like anything other than that is not true. So. Mm. Mm. Appreciate it, appreciate it. Uh, Haley and uh, obviously Jacob, um, before we get to Chris, Haley and Jacob, um, <laughs> I said, I'm going to say this line. Haley gives me Karen vibes through and through, right? <laughs> Karen vibes. Like when she said she hadn't eaten for two days, I just wanted to throw my TV away, you know, <laughs> literally. But what did you guys think of Haley and Jacob? Like, what was your thoughts in regards to? I mean, they had a really obviously conversation in the house uh, and that went a bit left, I guess. But uh, what's your what's you guys' thoughts? Like, what's you guys' thoughts? Uh, yeah, I'll start with Talisa and then work my way around. Oh. Um, you know, one thing I'm 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 really um proud of Jake for speaking his truth. Mm. Whether it was how she felt if it was the delivery was wrong or not, mm. I am very proud of him being able to communicate what he did not like and told her a lie is a lie. You lie. <laughs> you know, you lie. You did not want me to join you and the other people. Um and you could have invited me later, but mm -hmm. 
Um, I, I just want, I want him to continue in that vein and not be foolish. Like he said, you know, I apologize for what I said. And my thought is, listen, don't apologize for what you said, but apologize for the delivery because mm -hmm. you meant what you said. You meant that you were intentionally um, avoiding me being or want, wanting me to be around. It's what it is. Apologize for making the assumption that she has a boyfriend back home. Mm -hmm. That's fine. But don't apologize about the way you feel. You feel like she's pulling away because she is. Everybody can see it. Don't mm -hmm. apologize for that. That is a truth. And I need her to get out of her own way. Like she does seem, I don't know, somebody has said that she seems to think that she's better than him. Some part about her is very, she has an air as if she's upper echelon or part of the 1% that can shun him because he's a little different than her. I need her to understand that that's not who she is, right? Number one. And number two, to be honest that you don't like him. Mm -hmm. You just met him seven days ago. Just say, mm -hmm. you know what? There's some weird things about you. I mean, it mm -hmm. took Pastor Kyle to like pull out the fact that you didn't like um, what the 80s stuff. Like that, that was like pulling teeth. Uh, but it's more than just that because mm -hmm. they've already been intimate. And you know, people like you, you, I'm sure you know, like I know. Once you know, if I like you, once we're intimate, I I want to spend more time with you. If mm -hmm. I enjoy that type of company. Mm -hmm. She didn't. She she wasn't. She was. She didn't like it. You know. She she all, It wasn't correct. It wasn't right. good. I don't know how it wasn't was. good. As some men, I call it lazy doodle. <laughs> she was drunk, so she don't know. <laughs> she said it. She said it. It was drunk. She was drunk, so she don't. She did. She she don't she ever said I was drunk. <laughs> she doesn't regulate. She don't understand. She don't know. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's why you should not have drunk sex the first time ever. That's why you should not have drunk sex the yeah. first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, ever. Very, very true. August Love, what's, what's your guys' thoughts? I mean, huh, yeah, what's your thoughts? Amy and Jacob make me want to just sigh when I think about them. Mm. <laughs> like, give sigh out and then start. <laughs> um, I think that Haley has stopped trying. Mm. And unless she starts trying, they may as well have not even ever moved into the uh, neutral oh, home together yeah. yep. um, or even pretended. And then the whole fight with the dogs, we got a little oh. red 2.0. <laughs> Too many dogs were going on, man. Yeah, it was way like, they have four dogs. Sometimes bothered by the fact that they have four dogs <laughs> like, between them. Well, so many dogs. <laughs> but. Yeah. When you look at their relationship, he really wants to make this work. He is looking at this as I am 38. This is my, you know, my shot before I'm 40, which I guess he thinks 40 is some magical age to be married. <laughs> but um, he's looking at it like this is my last shot before 40. I'm going to try to give this my all. And then now she is like, oh, I'm done. Like lazy doodle was it. That was the last straw. And she's not trying anymore. And mm. I think that if she tried, maybe not that they could work out, but they could at least walk away from this not hating each other. Right. Would you on that? Would you on that? Jack and Glenn? Yeah, I think I think Jacob is trying. I think I, I agree with Talisa. I think he should have said what he said to her. It could have been done in a different manner. Um, I don't know if you guys watched Unfiltered. This is what she said to happen. On Unfiltered, she said that she, her, Virginia, and Clara was all going to meet downstairs. And they met Eric in the elevator. And Eric like, oh, by the way, let me come too. Then Eric called Ryan, and Ryan was like, well, I'm coming downstairs too. And so when they got down there, it was, it started out to be girls, but then the guys joined in later. And then when he comes down, they didn't really scatter. Ryan and Eric said they didn't scatter. It was just like, okay, dog, here you are. And he felt some type of way because he felt that she lied. Now, that's what she said on Unfiltered. Hey, you take it for what she's taking for what it's worth. They didn't deny the story. Eric and um, Ryan kind of collaborated her story. So I tend to believe that it happened that way. But he was already in his feelings anyway, that he felt like she didn't like him. So he made up in the narrative in my mind, hey, guess what? This is this way it is. They all met up. She met up with them and they scattered. Um, I think she, she wants to try with him. But then again, there's some things she might like about him. But when he's caught hitting that 80 stuff, 
when he's talking about bringing his neon lights and he still got a cassette player, he got a members only jacket. When he starts doing all that, she's like, I can't even relate to the 80s. To me, that's a big age gap because this dude is talking about the 80s and she's like, you know, I don't even know none of that. I don't have nothing to do with that. You know, mm-hmm. and so I think that's a big gap with them too. Mm-hmm. Um, and then she has a hard time communicating with him about how she really feels. And so he make it again, when you don't communicate, you leave the other person to create their own narrative. And yeah. so so he's creating his own narrative that she don't like me, she don't care about me, she doesn't want to hold hands. It's like, I think one of you just said it, it took Pastor Cal to pull out for her to talk about the 80s. It took mm-hmm. Pastor Cal to pull out that her love language is not touchy-feely. You know what I'm saying? So now, he announced this, he got this information, he should understand it's really not, now she could have been lying that her love language may be touchy-feely, but again, she ain't been in a relationship in seven years. So she really may not know what her love language is. And so with that time span of not being in a relationship, she has forgot some things. I mean, she was, you figure she's 20, I think 28, so her last relationship was she was 21. And so you still are kind of a, a teenager, teeny bopper, teeny bopper. Now you got this other kid, guy, a grown man, his last shot, he spent your 40, his last shot trying to be married. I need to get married. I need to have kids. I want to bring somebody into my little beach house. I want somebody to chill with my neon lights. He's looking at this as being, he got all in on this. He got every chip in. And this, he's like, you know what? I'm going to follow the process. And why can't she follow the process like me? And so if he doesn't give the same thing that he's given, he feels some type of way. And then on the lies on top of that, he's like, yo, it just ain't going to work out. So he went off. And, and you know, he apologized. But again, at the same time, sometimes when you can't take back what you say. Yeah. So so she's already feeling some type of way, and you dropped a bombshell on her. You just, and she said it. You just pushed me further away. And so now we only got like seven weeks, six or seven weeks left. And you might have to try to reel her in in six or seven weeks. But she like already two weeks out because she hates your guts. <laughs> she can't stand. Be, according to you, she can't stand to be around you. They're already sleeping. Think about it, they're already sleeping in separate rooms. Yeah, he's not about it, bro. Yeah. So you, he's you, not. You, he's not playing around with her. That's the, that's the thing. He's 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 quite militant about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I kind of I kind of like his militantness. I think uh, Paige could use a bit of that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, listen, regulate the thing. You understand? Because I, I would say personally. From hearing from hey, uh, the audience already knows me, where me and Hay don't get on. Like I, I, I don't like her behavior, and and the yeah. reason why is because she's not honest. Uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't, I don't like people who try to shield behind um, excuses. Like you just got to keep it true. Number one, you went downstairs. You could have texted him during the course of the night. You didn't. He then came downstairs and found out. Yeah. So if you're saying people came along with you to the party, it happens in real life. You go out. You're going out with your girls. Some other people came along. Da da da. You at that point then should communicate with your partner, but you didn't. You didn't want him around, so right. don't pretend as if you wanted him. As if it happened by mistake, it doesn't make a difference whether they came by mistake or they were invited. You didn't want him around. That's the that's the that's the killer point right there. Yeah, be honest and tell him I'm not gonna lie to you. I wanted my space, and when they came along, I just didn't want to text you because I still wanted my space. It happens. Right, it's it's all about being honest and be communicating. But then she tries to lie and then flip it and then gaslight him with the whole I haven't eaten. You know, it's making me sick. I haven't eaten for two days. Like that's like what the Karen does in the park to the black man, where it's like after she calls you a nigger and it's like oh oh no oh my god no like oh and then flips it onto you by saying oh my gosh like I I feel so bad and sorry and like what like you did this thing like own it. Why are you trying to gaslight the brother? That's my only issue with her. Like I I, I think. I personally think she doesn't like him, if I'm honest with you. The sex was yeah. trash and that finished it completely, right? That was the that was the ending note of their relationship. Like yeah. she probably tried to save herself and, and look, I don't agree with it, but I understand the thinking behind it. You know, you think to yourself, one last gasp, maybe to save the relationship. Maybe the D is good and then maybe I will start to see him differently. Yeah? And then when that failed, it's like <laughs> There's nothing that can save it now. We are going down the slope and I'm not sure how I'm going to bring this back. Yeah. So all that stuff about the 80s, even that, I don't even think that's even the issue. Like she just doesn't like him. Yeah. And I feel yeah. bad because it's a 10 year gap. It's too long. I think it's too it big is. for her. I think her friend said it too, though, that she doesn't like hurting people's feelings. Yes, but, she, but she's been hurting people's feelings since she's been on the show. You know, <laughs> you think about it. She's been hurting people's feelings and you call her Karen. I really think this is what me and my wife talked about. I really think, you know how Jake was searched to the house? Mm. I think he was searching to see if he could find some men stuff. Mm. <laughs> I think he really believed that she was, that she <laughs> had some other dude. I think he was really searching for stuff 
because he went through everything. So think about it. He went through the drawers. He went through the closet. He went through the suitcase. It wasn't like your normal. He was like really looking for something that was searching there. And I like I said, like you said, I think the D was trash. She's hurt by it. They have nothing in common. And at the end of the day, she, you know what? I'm riding my eight weeks out. I'm going to get my check and I'm calling mm-hmm. it a day. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But she didn't love him from that first glance. Well, you, if you think about when they got married, she didn't like him when she saw him. She was not attracted to him day one, so it was it was over day one because it was you know we don't even have uh, we don't even communicate like we don't have any chemistry. We have nothing in common. Day one, she was out. Now you mm-hmm. and your little dog Chloe is trying to bite <laughs> Sophie, so it's a no. Like my dog is my life. Like so, forget it. Like you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> We said it over, I, so you about to say something. Go for it. Mm-hmm. No, I just want to know what's this infatuation with the eighties. Like I was born in the eighties. I was a toddler in the eighties. He was eight at best in when the eighties ended. <laughs> what is the connection? <laughs> E.T. I'm E.T. That's all I got, though. That's it. I'm gonna stop right here. Maybe the, right. Maybe the Breakfast Club, you know. Maybe. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you it's know. Like, what is what is the nostalgia because you were literally eight so that means at best you remember five years of it mm. but it, it was like, just, like pastor cal told me like there's some things that need to change if mm-hmm. he wants the relationship to get where it needs to be pastor cal told me, there's some things that need to change you may have to change your 80s a little bit come to the 90s or 2000s a little bit move move, right. up, move up a little bit if you want to maintain this relationship i, I think he i'll you know i don't want to let me say i think he'll fight for it until the end but I think yeah. she won't put much. I don't think she'll put forth much much effort. Mm. I think she'll play the game again on TV, but I don't think she's really putting forth the effort to keep the relationship. Yeah, mm. there have to be some like over, like overly grand gesture for them to make it work, and I don't see that happening. Yeah. Mm, maybe round two will help. Um, so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> not like, <lazy. laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, maybe they'll have some sober stuff. Um, so finally, finishing um, on, I guess, the couple that everybody wants to talk about, everybody wants to hear about is the Chris and the Paige situation. Like, I, I, I don't know where to start because there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot. Um, it's kind of stressful, um, talking about Chris and Paige. Um, I feel overwhelmed. I feel tired. Uh, but we're going to talk about them. So, Chris and Paige, um, we obviously saw the conversation with Pastor Carl that she had. And also, Chris then came late and it kind of gave me Brandon and Taylor vibes all over again. That whole late entry coming in on Pastor Carl again. Um, but, uh, yeah, it kind of gave me that kind of vibe. Um, but what, what, what was what was your kind of, I guess, uh, thoughts on... Uh, the situation of Chris and Paige, you know, you, you know, what was what was your thoughts on that, man? If I go to August, because I think it's your last one, so August and August stuff. Um, first off, it's like, what's wrong with Paige? Mm. Like seriously, like some some like somebody needs to tell her to look at this situation from a standpoint from look at it from the outside in. Mm. You know what I'm saying, like. You obviously, this dude has told you he wants to get a divorce. And the the one thing that bothered me out of the whole episode was he whispered in her ear and she just like, okay, like I accept that. Why is it okay for her? What Like, why is it in your mind okay for you to accept a man like that? Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like you have all these things going for you. you you're an accountant. You're a, a realtor. You, you own your own property. <laughs> You don't actually need him. So he says he's afraid to fall in love with you. And that's what it takes for you to to be okay with the situation. Like, no, you should you should hold yourself, you should have higher standards for yourself when it comes to the men that you talk to and the men that that gets your time. Because I mean, that's the most valuable thing we have to offer anybody mm. is our time. So for this man, for you to sign up for this show, this man treats you the way in seven days. Like I said last week, he apologized in, <laughs> in three times in four days. Like it, it's for that, the, the, that's all the time that he needs to to have with you. Man didn't come home and 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 spend time with you. He went to Chicago. Now he's saying he want to get a divorce. Then he's saying he wants you to sit down and talk with his uh um 
ex girlfriend, ex fiance, maybe current girlfriend, and and he's saying mm-hmm. he still loves her, but then he's telling you he's afraid to fall in love with you. So it's 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 man, it's it's frustrating to look at it, and it's like at this point. I'm not even looking at Chris because Chris is giving us what Chris is gonna give us. It's like Paige, like come on, man, you gotta stop being a simp when it comes to certain <laughs> things. Man. You have to stop. You know what I'm saying? So that's 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 my take on it. I just got two things. Go for it, sis. Go for Merc it. on Chris's face maybe wanna pop him in his mouth. <laughs> and the second thing is if you tell me that you don't want to be with me I'm not even taking marriage into the equation mm. if we have been together for seven days and you tell me on day seven you don't want to be with me we can be done I don't know you you don't know me we mm-hmm. can be done I don't need to talk to your ex-girlfriend I am done with you don't call me again unless it is a divorce attorney, attorney asking me to sign some papers that's it we don't have to talk to each other anymore. Whispering in my ear probably would have got him. Mm. Hit. Sorry, y'all might call me violent, but it probably would have got mm. him. Hit. Mm. <laughs> that just would have been the anger bubbling up in me yeah. of him. Basically, he's playing both sides. Because mm-hmm. you know, when he went to Chicago, he had sex with that girl. Of course. I don't know what, the, I don't know what she thought he was there for. <laughs> so, why are we playing like this didn't happen? You had sex with me, and then you had sex with this girl. So, we're going back and forth. We can be done with this. Don't call me anymore. Don't text me anymore. Actually, reach out to an attorney on my like on your behalf for me. Like we don't need to have any other discussions. Like we're done. Period. I don't mm-hmm. understand why she's still going through this and that that part of it is troubling for me because she keeps putting things on God and it's a lot mm-hmm. of things that we can put on God but that ain't one of them. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Come on now. That's just not one for me. Mm. That's all I got. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. Teresa, what do you want to say? Talk to us. I do. I have uh, so much I want to say. But I'm going <laughs> to piggyback on what you just said about that's not one of one of the things that God has ordained. Then in my next thought process, I thought to myself, uh, I don't want to say that she's weak, but something doesn't click. And this is probably a pattern. And so just maybe it is ordained by God so that you could get slapped in the face and understand that your value and your worth is not connected mm. to a man. And you don't need, like, you, you're beautiful. You've got stuff going for you. Then I'm all like, where is your mom? What did she show you when you were growing up? Why do you think that this behavior is okay? Five seconds, for five seconds, I was like, go, Paige, go. Like, you know, when she called the producers, it was going off. I was like, yeah. Five minutes later, I was like, I know you lie. I know this is a lie. I know that you are kidding me. Like, I was I was excited that she was going to, like, run it. You know, she had passed her car on speechless. And I'm like, she, he come walking in the door. And I just thought, there's nothing about him that says to me that I am so attracted to you that I'm going to put up with this nonsense. Mm-hmm. Something just is not clicking. She wants this fairy tale, this be married. I don't know who she's seen it, what television show. Because even television shows, I have Chris out, right? Like, I don't mm-hmm. know what she is seeing that is making her feel like this is okay. And then you brought his luggage home too, sis. Carl, after he went to Chicago, he wasn't going to take his stuff with him. <laughs> you, you, you went to the a moment impromptu. I, oh, you know what? I checked in for this flight, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to transfer and go to... And so you said, okay, well, I'm gonna get you, I'll get your bags. No, your bags will be waiting for you in security because they would have thought it was a bomb because it was unattended in the in the airport. Like I'm just so confused and conflicted because I want all black women to have successful marriages, right? I want that for you. I want that. I want you to be happy. I want you to be healthy. Like I want that for you. But sis, this isn't it. And I don't understand how you don't see that this this man does not value you. He didn't value you from day one with his old shit, right? At the altar. Like he did, you felt it discomfort. We would think that you would have just said, you know what? It's okay. One last thing and I'm done. Cause my whole spirit just gets all angry. <laughs> like it just gets all like up in the uproar. Like I wish you were my friend and you were my sister. Cause I would have told you at the, at the reception that it's a no, but 
when Pastor Kyle said, well, why did you sleep with him? If you mm. felt, you know, that there was a disconnect, why did you sleep with him? And she said, um, because I didn't want to upset my husband. You knew him one day, Miss People Pleaser. Look, we all got a little bit of that in us, but um, no, no. And the one thing that he likes about you is your goodies, your goodness and mercy, because that's why he don't want to be successful. One thing he likes you, girl, please. I'm just, I'm just done. And at home, I'm spiritually attracted to you. I just want to slap him too. I just want to, I would probably choose violence, okay? They would be taking me out in handcuffs. I'm sorry. I don't want to be like, she gets me all like, like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm done. I'm done. Like, I feel hot and flustered. That's how just chaotic I feel when thinking about her. I'm with you. Sorry. I'm with you. No, no, no. You're good. You're good. You're good. Even though Chris was originally the problem, she's now perpetuating it, right? And as her perpetuating it and continue to do it, it is now falling on her because she's had several hours. Mm. And I'm done. I and hear I'm that. Good. Jax, you're in the conversation. Look, Jax has joined us for the last bit of our conversation. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, Jax. You're right, yeah. Uh, we're talking about Chris and and Paige. You know, before I let your husband go, I'll let you go first, and the ladies first, and that. You know what I'm saying. Um, what's your thoughts in, in regards to the the Chris and the Paige situation? Uh, you know, what's your thoughts? I felt like Talisa. I was so, I told my husband, I'm mad, I'm angry, <laughs> I'm angry. I was like, you know, Chris, I was mad at Chris, but in that episode, I was mad at Paige. I'm like, you don't owe him nothing. Let it go, sis. Let it go. You don't owe him nothing. And that smirk on his face, I was mm. like, don't, honey, don't, it don't, it look, don't let it work. And she thought, <laughs> I'm like, Chris. He got he got her wrapped around his finger. And I'm like, I hope I don't. This is what me and my sister talked about. You know, on on the Braxton, Tamar said that um, mm. Gabe had the dangling of gold. <laughs> <laughs> I said he like must Ryan, have. It? it must be gold. Mm -hmm. I don't understand. And I was just like, you know, God is not the author of confusion. Mm. He wouldn't put you, and I get what you're saying too, Talisa. Sometimes we do get in situations, so we learn a lesson and be like, "Oh no, oh no, I shouldn't have did that." I, I, mm, mm, mm. But yeah, I, I just couldn't believe it, and I felt like I told my husband, "My issue is Haley's been talking to her friends and mm. FaceTiming her friends all during the honeymoon." I said, "Paige must not be talking to nobody, because mm. if she had talked to homegirl from the reception, she'd be like, sis." Run, go now, leave. Don't don't put up with that. Don't put up with that. And I and I also told my husband, I said for her to say to Pastor Cal, you know, we've been intimate. So it's day eleven. We've been intimate every day except two or three days. I said, so that was the day when he went to Chicago. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and what other day did I say, husband? I can't remember. I was like, Well, oh, that'd be the day he was, the time he was gone is the only time and then when her cycle started. Oh. I mean, mm. I was just mad. I really wanted to ch chop him in the throat. I was mad at both of them. And I said, <laughs> he waited good till Pastor Cal left. And he slithered over there. Mm -hmm. He was hissing like a snake in her ear. Did God really tell you not to eat the fruit? <laughs> mm. Mm. Did he really say that? Did he really say that? Mm. I don't think he said that. I'm afraid I'm gonna fall in love with you. And she was like, he said, <laughs> uh uh. Mm -mm. You said you was done, be done. Bye. Mm. Bye. That's that's what I have to say. I was really disgusted. I was really disgusted. I, I was like, I, I can't do this. She is embarrassed. It's embarrassing to me. Mm. It's embarrassing to me. I was like, sis, you can't you can't act like that. So definitely. This episode, I'm I'm still mad at Chris, but I'm even madder at, at Paige because she, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Because now I'm the dummy. Appreciate mm. sis. Captain, talk to us, man. Yo, man, she is, uh, it, it, again, Chris, you can see where Chris, or what Pastor Cal, I want to reflect on this one apart. He doesn't deal with men very well. Mm. He's intimidated by men. 
Because when Pastor Cal asked him questions, he wasn't direct and honest and answering the question. You came in like he was a big deal. You came in late. You came in and now Pastor Cal is asking you questions and you don't want to be honest with him. You don't want to, you, 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 you're intimidated by the fact that he's giving you, giving, being direct with you, that mm. he's being straight forth with you. Now, my issue with Paige is this. Come on, girl, you got to have some type of self-worth. You got to have some kind of decency about yourself. Where's your daddy at? You know what I'm saying? What did your daddy teach you? What did your mama teach you? You done had two men walk you down the aisle. Let's go back. She had two men walk mm-hmm. her down the aisle. So what did these two men teach you about your self-worth? And then you better not let no man treat you like this. Now, mind you, we can't handle the baby situation because that was before you. But mm-hmm. what he did while he was on this trip to you, being disrespectful, calling you out of your name, treating you just like you a piece of meat, as my wife said in our review, getting on top of you just doing your business and treating you like that. That's how he treated her. Because think about it. He didn't show his tail every day. I don't know about y'all. If I show my tail during the daytime and embarrass her, guess what? Guess what ain't happening at night? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He showed his tail and made you look like a fool all day long. And you still was willing to give it up to him because you want to do a hug, hugging duties? Guess what? I said in our review, her dad, his daddy planted the seeds. Mm. When he had the conception, when he said, guess what? My son will work. He come home and I want you to have sex with him. And so you remember what she said? I was doing my wifely duties. duties yeah. what? You have wifely duties to say no. No is a complete mm. sentence. Yeah. You can say no. Guess what? As she said, it got to be the dingling of quote unquote gold. Because guess what? It, there's no way in the world he treating about the bags. Talisha, you was right. My bags would have still been at the airport. Mm. So right now, my, I would have picking my bags and they would have been bringing them to the house. But guess what? She didn't do that. And for him to slither and talk to her and wait for the dominant figure to leave and then slither. Girl, he already told you he loved that fiance. He already mm-hmm. told you to think about getting together. He already told he he left you on a plane because y'all flew back together. If you look at the clip, y'all was on the same plane from Nevada to, to Atlanta. So when he got to Atlanta, he hopped on another plane. Did he did he pack it? My wife said this, which was pretty smart. He packed a carry-on intentionally, knowing he was mm. going to start. Mm. Remember, he left his other bags, so he had a carry on attention, unless he just went to Chicago with nothing. So, if he went to Chicago with nothing, I mean, you got clothes somewhere else. It's mm. even worse. <laughs> so, so now you you, you know, moved on, and now you come back walking in here, like, oh, this is my apartment. I got a key, blah, blah, blah. I'm in, and I ain't gonna say, and then you can try to sleep with me because I guarantee you, you said, yo, let's, Paige, let's go to the back. She probably like, all right. But again, again, she's on her cycle. She may not have. I don't know. But, mm. you know, and, and then you worry about being pregnant by this dude because you, I mean, God forbid, God, glad that you're not pregnant by him because that just would have complicated things even more with mm. the situation. So he slid and he talked to her and she's standing in the parking lot like, I wish he'd come back. Like, I, like, can you come upstairs? Like, what's wrong with you? Where's her brother at? Because her brother was hard doing the scenes beforehand. Where's your brother at to tell you, you're like, girl, look, now, l- l- be honest. You know we ain't raised like that. You know you have, and and let's not make this a this a church thing. All church girls ain't like that. That's true. I don't care what you. There's some marriages God ain't put together, <laughs> and this is one of them. He, he didn't put this together. Married at first sight put this together. Mm-hmm. You just gotta have to get picked by people. This is not a God thing. Again, this is you signing up for a show and you getting picked for the show, and they matching you with somebody who lied to them and misinterpreted who he really was, and they thought you guys would match on paper. And so now you making yourself look like a fool. And other thing is for next week, if you meet with the XPO, we ain't got nothing to talk about. Mm-hmm. Because he already told me he wants a divorce. And guess what? I'm giving this dude, this is the I don't nobody, we didn't bring it up. I, and I looked at some of he went and I already saw that a divorce lawyer. He said, I already talked to a divorce lawyer about getting out of this marriage. And th- this is he told you this before he whispered in your ear. I went, Tanika, he might have got a punch. Mm. He might he might got a jab to his stomach or something. Like, hold on, dog. Did you let him whisper in your ear? She didn't try to pull away. Mm-hmm. She didn't try to pull away. She let, again. It's a difference with being respectful yep. and being a fool. Yeah, hundred percent. And she's she showing a lot of foolish behavior. Mm. A lot of foolish behavior. So hopefully she gets to talk. We get to see her talk to her friends or interact with her friends. I think the next episode, friends are supposed to come over. Hopefully her friends are set up straight and she'll be good for the rest of the episodes. Mm. Let me go to August love story. Let me get your last thoughts on Chris and Paige. What's, what's your last thoughts on Chris and Paige? Something you want to add for free? Um, 
Yeah, I'm I'm totally agreeing with everybody else. Uh, <laughs> like it, it's it's for me, it's hard to look at Chris now mm. and say, "Hey, Chris, you you know," and still be frustrated. <laughs> like my frustration comes with Paige for allowing. Hey, uh, he whispers in your ear that he already told you he wanted a divorce. We don't have anything to talk about. Except mm. the procedure to, to go forward and get a divorce. If you've already have an attorney, even, yeah. get that attorney to contact me. Let me sign these papers. We haven't merged any assets, so this should be a clean break. Right. I should be easily divorced from you. All we have is a few days on this TV show. Annulment. <laughs> right. So I don't know if they can get an annulment because of the sex. but Oh, yeah. Mm. yeah. But you could also argue that he is misrepresenting himself, so mm. maybe. Yeah. Right. It's it's just the <laughs> the one thing too about um I noticed when when he walked in the room you know usually when somebody walks in the room you stand <laughs> up and shake their hand and stuff like Pascal didn't even stand up yeah he didn't Pascal at that point for me has lost all respect for this mm-hmm. man mm-hmm. coming in late to talk to him and then here Chris is cowering down to Pastor Cal I don't want to talk about that or not being completely honest with him. I mean, I can't respect the man like that. And like Pastor Kyle said at the at the you know at the little the little screen, what's it called? The little the confessional. confessional part. He was like, usually I fight for marriages, but now I can't fight. No, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like I was like, I, I hope you wouldn't. I mm. wish in that moment when he said it would have been disrespectful to Paige that she would have said, "No, go ahead, say it." Mm. I'm a big girl because then he he would have had to have said it. Right. Mm-hmm. But, but she knows she wanted it, too, because if you go back to some of the things she said. She wanted to have sex on her honeymoon night because she had a dress when all the girls had got together. Right, before the, right. He was ready. He was ready. He was like, OK, let's do it now. Again, it, it was good. So she like, OK, let's do it again. Oh, man, it was good. Let's do it again. You know what I'm saying? So she was she's a willing participant in this thing when it comes right. to this. I don't want I don't want to give her the pass on this. She's a willing participant because he didn't force you to pull your stuff down and do all that other stuff. You, she's a willing participant. Now, mm-hmm. why she did it, her motives are doing it. That's you don't have to do that because you're the wife. You don't have to. That's where the, the dilemma comes in. He didn't treat you like trash all day long, and you still were giving goodies and treasure at night. He didn't made you embarrassed all day long. You feeling some type of way all day long. You feeling ashamed to be around the other girls and have conversation, but yet you'll go home and try to please this guy who ain't treat you right all day. Mm. I mean, what does that say about you as a woman and your self worth? Let's let you know uh, again. What have you been taught? Where you're at? Again, you don't have to do. You don't have to succumb to his level. He can't right. treat you bad and expect to get what you're willing to give. Mm. And right. so she, she got to realize in that aspect that yo, I, I'm value. I'm valuable. And guess what? If it doesn't work with him, it's gonna work with somebody else. So you know what we're gonna do is. Bring me the papers. Let me sign this. If I got to be on camera like Mindy did and be in my own little room for the next seven weeks, I'll be in my own little room for seven weeks, whatever I case I need to be. I'm going to finish this process and I'm going to find somebody else. But don't keep putting yourself through this turmoil and heartache and pain and frustration right. when you don't have to. Mm-hmm. And I think that's where she's at. She's like, do I have to be around? No, you don't have to be around him. It's okay to bounce. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. We'll finish up. Okay. Go for it, August. Finish what you're saying. Go for it. I was saying that's right. It's, just, it's simply that, man. You don't have to be a willing participant in this foolishness. Mm-hmm. You can you can bow out, say it didn't work, and move on to the next thing. Participate in the things that they have you participate in. If it's a check at the end of the tunnel, you get that check and keep pushing. Mm-hmm. Like the, the the decisions that you're making right now aren't wifely dudes. Like people that are married, dated. Then got married, knew each other for years. Don't go through stuff like that. Yeah. It's not manipulated like that. Like, yeah, my wife can say no to to the you know to sex and everything, but she's still completing her wifely duties by all the other stuff that she's doing. Mm-hmm. So it's like your your aspect of marriage and your aspect of what your duties are as a wife. You haven't even established that yet because you haven't got past the part of him saying he doesn't like you. <laughs> you, know right. you haven't got mm. the part of him calling you ugly, mm. you know, essentially. So it, it's 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 hard to even think that, you know, you're you're thinking about it. Oh, my wife can do this. My wife can do this. You're trying to be friends with this person first. So it's 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 like it's, it doesn't make sense to me, and it's hard for me to be like feel sorry for at this point, which 
the situation is bad. It looks bad on TV when you see her and she's by herself in the apartment and everybody else with their with their spouse and she's just in here by herself. She got his luggage and all this stuff. It's it looks sad, but it's like you're causing this. Mm. You're allowing this to happen, and 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 how it looks on TV or how it's being portrayed on TV. You're just being simple minded and and just being a follower and, and not standing on your own too you know and let and allowing this man to manipulate you in a way to only he's only doing what she allows him to do that's true yeah. and that's yeah. what i think that's what bothers me the most mm. out of their whole situation is that yeah. she don't see oh, before you go before you go jackie before you go i gotta let talisa go sorry <laughs> <laughs> It's okay because it's really nice to hear the fellas and their opinion about the whole situation because as women, we're going to feel that way anyway. But um, like Chris, yes, he is very manipulative, right? He, he, he does have very horrible qualities and behavior traits. But at this point, it, is, it does fall on page. He's told you several times in several different ways that you are not his cup of tea, that he does not like Hennessy, or whatever it is that you are, you aren't it and he doesn't choose you. He's told you that a million different times and what I want her to do is to choose herself. Before mm -hmm. you do anything else, I choose me. And if I choose me, you can't, you know, you, you can't embarrass me like this. You can't make me look foolish because I now know my self-worth. I know my value. I have respect for me. I love me first, right? I so want to just slide in her DMs and say, girl, listen, I'm going to give you some free um, some free sessions so that we can get to the bottom of what all this is so you can know who you are. Like, because that's where it starts. Like, I don't feel like she has a good grasp of who she is except for um, what she does, right? As an accountant, a mm. homeowner, you know what I'm saying? A daughter. I don't think she knows who she is. Who, who are you? standing separate from those things and for some reason she equates value with being a wife right um no sir no ma'am no thank you i'm a woman and i hold value i i'm valuable as a single woman right solo on my own standing flat foot in the mirror in the mirror i'm worthy of love right I, i'm worthy of every good thing that god has in store for me Respect. every single one and this is how <laughs> worthy of respect at minimum from you. Mm -hmm. And this, is, this man isn't it. This man that you are pining after because you are quote unquote married for five or seven days or whatever, it's not it. I just really, like you guys said, want her to just open her eyes, right? Smell the coffee. Somebody <laughs> share with her, like, listen, this isn't it, sis. Do, do better. He's not even attractive. I don't care how golden his D is. He might got the ticket, okay? He might be. But the way he treats you is not enough for you to be sitting in Billy. Mm. You can find something somewhere else. It's mm. probably even better because your connection and chemistry will be there. It'll be off the charts. It's just not going to be casual sex because that's what mm. they're having, right? Mm. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm gonna. I agree with everything you guys have said. It has been an honor and a pleasure. Like you guys are so like observant and your your, your thoughts are so well thought out. I'm gonna like, oh, that's good. Like that's, good. <laughs> Ooh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it, Lisa. So I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna get you guys final statements. We've come to an hour and a half time, so um, otherwise I could drag you to four hours, but. Um, I want to get everybody's final statements. <laughs> I really could. If you guys see the lives that we do, it's four or five hours. So I, I, I want to get everybody's uh, final thoughts, um, 30 second roundup. Um, and also as well, as you give us your roundup and summary, please also let us know where we can find you um, and where we, where we can connect with you on your particular platform. If I let Jack and Glenn go first, I know it's just Glenn today, yeah. but. Okay. Now you're fine, you're fine. And, you know, my final thought is, is does Chris run the show or does Merit have lifetime run the show? Because Chris seems like he run the show. He tells <laughs> when they cut the mic, when they're not to do production, when not to <laughs> film. I mean, Brandon couldn't get away with that. Where's the girl that told I Brandon, oh, dog, we're going to record you now. We're going to record you. Maybe, I don't know, did they leave her on that season? Because she was <laughs> on it. 
whoever production is now is like they just go whatever chris says there's no way in the world and then Paige, listen she's oh, i'm gonna cut my mic no don't cut your mic this is what we this is what we dare because she's gonna spill the beans anyway so just let it be on tv what do you have to say that you don't want everybody to hear um on here but you know we said it all i think Paige needs to grow um, need a man up to talk to somebody in her life maybe your pastor pastor cal she needs some counseling and some therapy to get some self-worth build up uh for herself I think Chris just is being a manipulator and trying to, again, all he wanted was sex. He wanted to get married so he can have sex uh, and not burn uh, in a religious standpoint. You know, he just wanted that, that relationship uh, with her. Um, Clara and Ryan, I think they can work some things out after they become uh, more um, uh, attentive and more, don't worry about what the perception is on camera. Uh, Haley and Jacob, I just think it's done. I think they, they're just totally out of it. Eric and Virginia, if she can control her drinking and allow uh, him to be a husband and she receive it, I think she'll be okay. But Chris and Paige, they need a lot of help. And I really, in my opinion, I think they shouldn't. After next week with the fiance, that should be the last straw. If you want to follow us, you can follow us at Jack and Glenn on YouTube. On, on Instagram is Jack underscore Glenn. On Twitter, also Jack underscore Glenn. Let's make sure you subscribe to us. It's been a pleasure, been an honor to be with you guys in every week. Talisa, is a, is a pleasure being with you as well. Follow your channel for a while. And we just great conversation. Thank you. Appreciate it, Glenn. August Love Story. Oh, I kind of said your name, but yeah, August. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I do that, I realize I'm saying the name. But uh, yeah, give us a summary and then um, let us know where we can find you as well, guys. Um, hey, I, I want Chris and Paige to break up. <laughs> <laughs> Just stop messing with each other. I want them this to be their last episode. Right, episode eight it. needs to be the last time. That's them. it. Like, <laughs> Just just talk with Paige here now and again, you know, so we know she's still okay. Uh, <laughs> Eric and Virginia, I think Eric needs to stop looking at her at stop looking at himself as being the professional or the or the uh, vet. the vet in in this married thing because he's married and and start looking at her as his wife. And I think Virginia needs to grow up and start realizing she's in a relationship. She's mm -hmm. she's a wife. Um, I think Bree and Vincent are gonna be okay. They just gotta learn to communicate with each other. Um, who am I missing? Jacob and Haley, they're pretty much done because I mean Jacob went strong one way and Haley is a strong another way and don't like him. So hey, that's it. Uh, is that I hit everybody? I think that was it. Okay, guys. cool. Um Or did you do Claire and Ryan? Oh Claire and Ryan, they're 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 okay. They they hiding behind a curtain anyway. So <laughs> like Figured out, you know, <laughs> like he's hiding something, and Clara's like, "Ah, oh, I want everybody to know." So eventually, it's gonna come out. So, um, just give it time. Um, if you haven't already, please go subscribe to our channel at um, August Love Story. We have a podcast that comes out every Wednesday on Ooh. our channel, so you guys can check it out. This week, we're actually talking about cheating, so it'll be a good episode. That's my favorite topic, right there. <laughs> 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 and we're August Love Story on everything. Um, every in my personal page is Artika, just first name at Artika. His is I am Tommy T the third. Appreciate yep. that, guys. And Talisa, give us a um, summary and uh, where we can find you. I'm gonna make it real easy. Mm. I think that um, the only people that have a chance is Brianna and Vince. Mm. As long as they can work through their communication issues, I think that they will be fine. Everybody else can just go away. Like they can all just silently go <laughs> off into the, the night, and I won't. I wouldn't even. I wouldn't even know. Like, I mean, I do like that they're messy. Okay, like, and they have relationship issues because that's what I like to talk about. Mm -hmm. But they are all pretty much doomed. At first, at one point, I thought that Clara and Ryan might have had a chance, but now I feel like no. They'll probably say yes for the sake of saying yes. But everybody else is just going to be a no. I'm rooting for Brianna and um, Vincent. I hope that they learn how to communicate and get their life in order. You can find me everywhere at I am Talisa Ray. Listen, just Google Talisa Ray and I should pop up. Include my little podcast. I can't wait to watch y'all's podcast on Wednesday about cheating. I'm like, <laughs> I like all things cheating. Let me hear what y'all talking about. You know um, me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> follow me. <laughs> Subscribe, follow me on Instagram, subscribe to my channel. If you aren't already, you are welcome to become a ray of sunshine. Everybody, come come on in. 
Yeah. <laughs> you might have to bring that that podcast episode on here. We want to hear them cheating stories. Um, <laughs> <laughs> i'm definitely tuning in on wednesday um so yeah guys uh thank you so much uh for joining us uh tonight um last week we were the avengers this week we're the U- u.s task force i don't know what will be next week might be the border force next week but um but no thank you so much guys for for joining us and sharing your points of view it's been good it's been insightful um and it's been good just to hear different points of views from you guys and coming together um audience as always, thank you so much for being respectful in the comment section. Um, make sure that before you guys leave, you like the video. It helps with the optics and the analytics. And also as well, make sure you are following these guys. Okay, I chose these guys with a purpose. Okay, because I know that they're sound individuals. So listen, you can trust me. Follow them. Okay, follow them. Yeah, click, like, and share, and subscribe. I always say to share, and I don't know why to share comes out. Like, share, and subscribe, okay, guys, to the channel. But, guys, it's been beautiful. It's been proper. We're going to see you next week, and hopefully we'll have some better news on Chris and Page. Okay, I'm pulling a leg. There's not going to be any more better news. We appreciate you guys. Stay locked and stay loaded. We'll see you next week.